calling all movie buffs. Today, let's delve into a timeless 1942 film directed by William Wyler, which portrays the resilience of an English family during World War II. Set in the charming village of Bellum, the story revolves around a family navigating the challenges of wartime. With a blend of humor, shock, and heartfelt moments, this movie keeps audiences captivated throughout. What makes this film stand out? Is it the strong characters, the realistic depiction of wartime struggles, or the enduring themes that still hold true today? Share your thoughts below. Speaking of characters, who's your favorite? Is it the steadfast main character, the supportive spouse, or perhaps someone else stealing the spotlight? Let us know. We're eager to hear from you. What's your most treasured memory or personal experience tied to this film? Share your stories below. So grab your popcorn and get ready for a journey filled with laughter, surprises, and emotional depth. Enjoy the show and remember to share your thoughts and stories below. Your fellow movie enthusiasts are waiting. I absolutely love the movie Mistress Miniver for so many reasons. Putting aside its purposeful messages, the film is incredibly well made and the actors give fantastic performances. Greer Garson especially is amazing in her role, totally deserving the Oscar she won, even though she wasn't sure about taking the part at first. Her acting is bright and unforgettable, reminding me a bit of Meryl Streep. Teresa Wright also does a great job as the down-to-earth, lovely character, especially for only her second film. She's really talented, earning her the Best Supporting Actress Oscar. The movie does a great job of showing the contrast between the carefree life in London before the war and the serious reality of wartime. It gives us a touching look into what life was like during World War II in England. One of the best parts of the movie is the Vickers moving sermon during the London bombings, talking about how everyone is in this together during wartime. This message was powerful not only in the movie, but also in real life, being broadcast on Voice of America and printed in Time magazine. It shows how Hollywood could really inspire people in a good way. The movie also does a great job of showing how war affects regular people's lives, especially through the Miniver family's experiences. It's sad and makes you think. The filming, especially the work of Joseph Ruttenberg, is top-notch and makes the movie even better, capturing the scary moments with real skill. Scenes like Vin's climb up the stairs and the air fight above are intense and stick with you. The dialogue in the movie, like the quote, if war comes, it's goodbye roses, shows how people stay strong and hopeful during hard times. Lastly, the end of the movie, where they talk about supporting the war effort by buying defense bonds and stamps, is a powerful reminder of how people came together and sacrificed during that time. When I think about how Mistress Miniver still affects people today, I remember the important topics it covers and the strong feelings it brings up. It's a really great movie that will always be remembered. Greer Garson is best known for her role in the film. After completing work on Mistress Miniver, Walter Pigeon went to the desert to recover from a series of bad colds. The Vicar's final rousing speech from the movie was printed in magazines like Time and Look. President Franklin D. Roosevelt ordered that it be broadcast on The Voice of America, and copies of it were dropped over Europe as propaganda. This speech, now known as the Wilcoxon speech, pays tribute to actor Henry Wilcoxon's stirring delivery of it. It resonated widely and left a lasting impact on audiences worldwide. In 1942, a notable film featuring an actress named Teresa Wright won the prestigious Best Picture Academy Award. This victory marked the first of two for her, as she later appeared in another winning film in 1946. She also graced two other nominated films with her presence. In a memorable scene, during a discussion about their son's upcoming marriage, one character expresses pride, prompting another to cheekily inquire if they are biased. This subtle nod references an earlier movie. The film's authenticity extended beyond its cast to its settings. A famous London location was meticulously recreated in Hollywood, foreshadowing similar recreations for future classics. These snippets offer a glimpse into the layers of this film, intertwining performances, clever references, and detailed set design to create a cinematic experience that endures. In terms of accolades, Mistress Miniver is notable for being one of the first films to receive nominations in all four acting categories at the Academy Awards, a feat shared only with From Here to Eternity. Walter Pigeon's character wears an armband marked with LDV, which signifies local defense volunteer. Ian Wolfe, a prolific actor, appeared in several acclaimed films, including Mutiny on the Bounty, You Can't Take It With You, and Mistress Miniver, all of which were winners in the Best Picture category. Throughout his career, Wolfe showcased his versatility in a wide range of roles across various award-winning films. In 1942, 
a remarkable film captivated audiences and made waves in the world of cinema. A talented actor played roles in three films up for the Best Picture Oscar that year, one of which stood out for its excellence. This particular film not only secured a nomination, but also claimed victory in the category, making a significant impact on the cinematic landscape. Beyond receiving praise from critics, the movie proved to be a commercial hit, breaking records at the box office. The studio earned an impressive profit, underscoring the film's widespread popularity with audiences of the time. Among the notable cast, a newcomer made her debut, adding an extra layer of interest to the film. Her entry into the world of cinema through this production showcased her potential and contributed to the appeal of the movie. In summary, the film's success at the Oscars, its staggering box office numbers, and the introduction of a new talent into the industry collectively highlight its significance in 1942. In 1942, a special movie did something very rare in movie history. It won two big awards at the Oscars in the same year. Greer Garson was the lead actress, and she won Best Actress. The movie itself also won Best Picture. Only a few actors and actresses have ever won both awards in the same year. Greer Garson is among them, along with some other famous names like Claudette Colbert and Vivian Lee. Another actress, Teresa Wright, did something remarkable too. She got nominated in two different acting categories at the Oscars that year. She was up for Best Actress for one movie and Best Supporting Actress for another. She won the Best Supporting Actress Award, which was a big achievement. This was a big moment for Greer Garson. Winning the Oscar was like a big stamp of approval for her talent and hard work. Her role in that movie was really memorable and left a lasting impression on everyone who saw it. Amidst the challenges of finding the right actors, one lead role was eventually taken by a talented actress despite some initial doubts. She had her reservations, but her portrayal of a resilient character captivated audiences. The movie was set against the backdrop of wartime, adding realism to its story. Despite the difficult times, people eagerly went to see it, craving stories that mirrored their own struggles and strength. The movie enjoyed a successful 10-week run at a famous venue, becoming a cultural sensation. The lead's performance was praised as one of her finest, showcasing her acting skills. Her portrayal struck a chord with viewers, earning her praise and solidifying her Hollywood status. The success of the movie didn't surprise those in the industry who recognized its compelling narrative and characters. The lead's portrayal left a lasting impression on cinema, inspiring future actors and filmmakers. It remains a timeless favorite, showing the enduring impact of storytelling in film.